Statistics suggest that women constitute about 49% of Nigeria's population. Yet, participation of women in politics has been quite low since the inception of Nigeria's democracy. Over the years, concerted efforts have been made by government and non-governmental organizations to increase the level of participation of women in politics in line with the declaration made at the Fourth World Conference on Women in Beijing, which advocated 30% affirmative action. The extant national gender policy in Nigeria took it a notch higher by recommending 35% affirmative action while seeking more inclusive representation of women with at least 35% of both appointments and elective positions. These efforts have so far yielded little results as women participation in politics is still far from the desired numbers. In the 9th National Assembly, there are only seven women in the Senate out of 409 senators, while the House of Representatives has only 13 women out of 360 members. A recent bill in the House of Representatives, which proposes creation of additional seats to be filled by only women in the National Assembly, is the latest effort aimed at increasing female representation. This bill, seeking to alter the 1999 Constitution to create additional special seats for women in the federal and state legislative houses, passed second reading at the House of Representatives' plenary session on Wednesday, 28 April 2021. The bill proposes the creation of additional 37 Senate seats, specifically for women, one from each state of the Federation and the FCT. It also proposes the creation of two additional seats from each of the 36 states of the Federation and FCT for the House of Representatives, with additional creation of one seat from each senatorial district of the 36 states of the Federation to be contested for solely by a woman. This establishes three additional state House of Assembly seats, one from each of the senatorial districts in the state. The provision is, however, a temporary special measure which will come up for review after four election cycles of 16 years. The bill would create a new narrative on the question of female inclusion in Nigeria's politics. What are the issues behind low participation of women in politics? What does the new bill portend for Nigerian women? These and more are the issues to be x-rayed on this edition of Good Morning Nigeria. I would like to know how this bill can work, considering the fact that uh, we're not running a one-party system. Thank you very much. Um, I want to start by saying fully that I fully support this bill, 100%. And I want to commend Honorable Kiroka for proposing that bill, and also to commend the Speaker and all members of the National Assembly for supporting this bill thus far. And I pray that it will, they will pass it up to the final reading. It is clear that um, there is so much fear and agitation when we talk about quota system, when we complain about increasing the number of women in the National Assembly. Because when you bring up the, the matter, the members of the National Assembly feel ag agitated. They feel who do you want to unseat? And the safest way, the Honorable uh, Member analyzed this by proposing this additional seat. It is not strange. Quota system happens all over the world. <coughs> Special concessions are given to women. This is not the first time it's happening. Most of the developed countries, particularly in the African sub-region. Rwanda did it, Senegal did it, Kenya, South Africa, most of the African countries. And it is clear that when we have more women in the National Assemblies, the better for it for the nation because better laws will be passed. Women's participation is key to national development because women are mothers, they know where it pinches. 
the family. And for what the members of the National Assembly have done so far, I want to sincerely commend them. We are praying that this bill will pass final reading in the interest of the nation because it is a big shame for Nigeria being the father figure in the African continent. We call ourselves the giant of Africa, and yet we are the least represented at both national and state assemblies. We need to lead by example. We need to show clearly that we are indeed the giant of Africa. So having this bill pass will make a big difference in the development of our dear country because we, are, we have more women participating. You can see the development that is growing fast in countries where we have more women or in countries where women are at the helm of leadership. It speaks clearly and Nigeria should not be an exception. Again, uh, Dame Paula Italian. You were Deputy Governor of, of Plateau State, and of course you've also uh, now been a Minister of the, of the Federal Republic. Our politics, some would argue, is governed essentially still by patriarchy. And that's why, on its appearance and in substance, it's male-dominated. And some persons have also argued that, yes, the examples you cited earlier on the African continent, Senegal, Rwanda, and uh, in some instances, Tanzania. Uh, Tanzania and South Africa, uh, we have seen increased participation of women in politics. But that some of the older democracies that we uh, cite often excitedly uh, are still battling with issues around patriarchy. Until January this year, the United States never had a woman as vice president. And it's been argued that one of the reasons why Hillary Clinton lost to Donald Trump was because the U.S. wasn't ready for a female president. Until 1979, one of the oldest democracies, Britain, never had a woman as prime minister. So from your participation, practical experience in politics, is it something that we can cure by way of legislation to say, look, the cultural and social practices that we have around uh, women participation in politics, uh, we can leapfrog all of this and suddenly we say, all right, get 111 uh, women, say, into the National Assembly. Thank you very much. Well, thank God. The examples you've shown, thank God America has realized that they are now ready with a female vice president. And it is happening all over the world. It is clear that any country that lacks a good representation of women, development is slow. Take, for example, even the management of COVID-19. It is clear countries that are led by women perform better. The statistics are clear. And we cannot keep running away from the facts that women have a special role. And they have that God-given skill to manage issues and to see things differently from the way men see it. Who nurtured all the leaders? It's a woman. If she rocks the cradle, what stops her from ruling the world? So we should stop talking about, oh, Nigeria is not yet ready, this and that. We have more than qualified women. This few examples that you've made sounds very strange that uh, three members uh, never propose a bill. But I want to tell you that I am proud of all the members that are in the national, uh, female members that are in the National Assembly. They are making us proud, but they are, their voice cannot be heard because they are like a drop of water in the sea compared to the total number. 
And we cannot make any progress if we don't change the narratives. And the time is now. Because the world over, the United Nations is frowning at any country that refuses to have gender equality. Gender equality is not just a woman's right. It is a human right. And we have to allow this participation, or else we will keep going round and round. Women, I know politics, you can't play politics without money. Money is key. And the men have always been there, and they have more opportunity to the finances. Women have never had that privilege of the number compared to the men. And I want to say it emphatically clear that women have better and key roles to play if we have the number that can compete with the men. The, uh, the men uses women. And they use women against their fellow women. Why? Because of poverty. Any woman that allows a man to use her against her fellow woman is simply because she, she, education is one, and poverty is another issue. And that's why we are talking about the education of the girl child. If a woman is well educated, <coughs> she will know her rights, and she will then stand to defend it at all times. So this is an issue that Nigeria has to address it now, or else we will keep going round and round. The time is now to make a difference. I'm very much concerned about how these women will emerge in terms of looking at the political mechanics and the structure of the country and the nature of political parties that we have. For instance, uh, uh, Dame, is it possible to say in a party, for instance, you have the APC, yeah. right? So APC will say, okay, as far as we are concerned, any woman that's interested in contesting for House of Preps or National uh, or Senate should not pay for her nomination form. Is it possible? Or to reduce the amount of money for women, to enable women emerge as, as those that have been nominated to, to run for different constituencies. Besides that, what about other political parties? Would they also do the same thing to ensure that women must emerge? Because I'm thinking of how they will emerge, since it's not an appointing position. Mm -hmm. It has to go for election, mm -hmm. right? And this B we're talking about, is it going to compel all political parties to have a policy specifically for women participation in elections? So I want to see how this will emerge. You have been in politics for, for a long time, so how will, it, how, will it, how will it happen? Thank you very much, Kiran. The starting point is the political parties. And we are working on the party amendment of the constitution. The party constitution is undergoing a process of amendment. And that is actually the starting point. Because look at all the political parties. Out of maybe 25 or 30 members of the National Working Committee, we have only one woman as the woman leader. What will one voice? The moment she wants to talk, talk they will all shout on her. And whatever she brings on, on the table, they kill it. So we are, up, we are working on amending the party structure because that is the starting point. This bill is fantastic. It is another process of helping the process, which is happening everywhere. But the starting point is amending the constitution, uh, the party constitution, to have more women in the National Working Committee. Because as uh, uh, Cynthia clearly mentioned, over 33,000 contested in the last election, but they were fiddled out during the primaries. We are not even interested uh, in giving us free forms. No. You give us free forms and then you whittle us out 
of the primaries. That is not the issue. Allow us by the form. We will contest, but let us have a fair playing ground. What are the financial muscle? The financial muscle is, you see, that's why we believe in the uh, option A4, the open primaries. The um, delegate election is not democratic. Only those who can afford it. How do you expect maybe uh, 30 people, delegates, or 50 delegates to represent a whole constituency? 30 people that will come and vote on behalf of 3,000 people. Is that democratic? No. And two days before the uh, primaries, the, you can't even see the delegates. Somebody has picked them, locked them up in a hotel, <laughs> and make sure that nobody has access to them. They pay them heavily to come and vote. Women don't have that kind of money. So uh, and uh, we uh, want how do they get these seats? The, they will get these seats if we amend the party constitution. If we have more women in the National Working Committee, during and uh, when, they, when we have more women in the National Working Committee, the process of selling through the primaries is very important. If we have more women, those women will ensure that these women are not wriggled out. And once a woman sells through the primaries, she becomes the candidate of the party. Automatically, she will make it. But the moment you are wriggled out of the um, primaries, finish. And that is because we have poor representation at the party level. And we are working on not only APC, we are reaching out to all the other political parties, PDP and APC. They are the key dominant parties. And I believe with all that we are putting in place, there is hope that the party constitution will be amended. And once it is amended, we will be able to get more women sell through the, uh, this thing. That is one option. The second option is what the bill proposed, where these seats are exclusively for women to contest among themselves. And that happens in all the countries, most of the African countries. Namibia, we have the uh, zebra uh, policy, which is 50-50. And it is from the party level. Once the party structure is amended and the party structure supports gender parity, we will sell through. Should this be enshrined in our constitution? Yes, in constitution. the party constitution not party, and I'm talking vote. about the constitution of the nation. Vote, because yes. You, can, you may not be able to compel all parties. You know, to do this. Because in, the, in those countries you talked about, they may not have uh, multiple political parties. They may not have, some of them, uh, uh, in South Africa, for instance, I think about two active parties, right? Yes. And the, most and the same thing in Nigeria. Mm. The same thing in Nigeria. Virtually two active parties. The remaining parties will fill in and uh, join uh, uh, one of the two. Yeah. I them, you know, this uh, earlier on in, in this conversation with respect to um, parties amending the constitution to accommodate women, yeah. right? Instead of uh, having this other uh, kind of a parallel election, mm -hmm. you know, representing the same place, the people, you say, a woman representing a state where you have other people representing the constituencies of that state, mm -hmm. right? And if, if this can be built into party system, mm -hmm. you say, look, all parties, as far as this election coming is concerned, women, are given a certain number of positions. So field as many women as possible to ensure that we get this number. Mm -hmm. Is there a possibility? It is. And we are working on that. And I believe that something will come out of it. Right. Not just the APC, all the uh, parties. Because we are reaching out to all the other political parties. And mm -hmm. the uh, politics is a game of number. The more, the merrier. There's nothing wrong with having two people representing a certain constituency. There's nothing wrong. The more the merrier, mm. and the more representation, the more dividends of democracy that people will get out of it. And it is clear that where a woman is representing a constituency, the people in that constituency enjoy more benefits of demo uh, dividends of democracy because she's a mother. 
she knows where it pinches. She reaches out and addresses the problems that affects the lives of the people in that constituency. So, you see, all these things are internal arrangements that can be easily met. Mm. We are politicians, we know how it works. When you talk about uh, 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 poor representation of women in the North uh, West, things are beginning to change. Kaduna State is part of North West. But because we have a gender sensitive governor, he made it happen. We have a good number of women in appointive positions. We have a, uh, a deputy governor. And none with the he for she. It's all about lobby. We are reaching out to the governors. We are making friends with them. And most of the governors are seeing reality. I want to tell you that this coming election, Northwest will surprise you.